Thank you, YouTuber, for telling us how to search USA Jobs. Now, once you've found a vacancy announcement, we're going to go over how it is to read a vacancy announcement that you are interested in. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a tab called Overview. When you look at the overview, it's going to take you to the, the top of the vacancy announcement where you will find the position title, which is Management Analyst. You'll also find the department, which is, and this one is Department of Health and Human Services, the agency, this one FDA, and the job announcement, HHS FDA MP-11-540110. Job announcements are really important because as we've discussed, if you put it on your resume, we can make sure that it is attached. Also, it will help you to remember what positions you applied for. Next, you'll see a salary range. This position is unique because it goes from the grade 9 through 13. Each of our grade levels have steps, which are longevity steps, within each of the grades from 1 to 10. When you see a salary range, you will see that this is from a step 1 of a 9, and this one goes up to a step 10 of a 13. A lot of applicants feel that they have that whole range and they can kind of negotiate, but actually, depending on the grade level that you're selected from, your eligibility will be to the step 1 of that particular grade. There are exceptions to the rules except that this has to be done after you're selected and a justification would have to be done for you to be determined to have superior qualifications or you could go from the step one up to up and, and including the step 10 of that particular grade. Then you will see the series and we've talked about, you were just talked about the series which is a four digit number related to that particular position. So for this one it's a 30343. I just talked to you about the grade range, which this one is running from 9 to 13. It'll tell you if it's a full or full time or a permanent position. Promotion potential just means that you can, if you go in at the lower level, you will have promotion potential in this job from a 9 to the 11, the 11 to 12, and then a 12 to 13, all without any further competition. Last, next would be the duty location. This particular job has one vacancy and it happens to be in Montgomery County of the United States. One thing is really critical is even though you are eligible for the special hiring authority, you still need to register and register with you and to look in who may be considered. I selected this one because even though this is a federal government job, this one is limited to FDA, as you can see where it said FDA wide. There are times that even though you're eligible for the internal federal job, that they may be limited the consideration to a specific location or a specific agency. Um, so you need to make sure that it says a person with a disability or the veterans program when it's looking for who may be considered. Last in this section, you would see a job summary. Job summary just tells you a little bit about HHS. Those are all the overviews. The next tab, which will be to the right of overview, is duties. When you click on the duties, it'll take you to the duties and responsibility for this position. So this position is unique and it has four grade levels. Then you will see the duties and responsibility for each of those grade levels. The 9, the 11, the 12, and the 13. If you go right to the top of this particular screen and it says back to top, it will take you to the next tab which is called qualifications and evaluation. Again, because this is a unique position that goes from a 9 through a 13, you will see qualifications for each of the grade levels. The first section of the qualifications required are based on the specialized experience that we'll be looking for to determine the basic qualifications. At each of the grade levels, we'll be looking for one year at the next lowest grade. As you scroll down past the specialized experience, you will also see 
you would also see in some circumstances substitution for education for experience. Substitution for education of experience means that that we can take your education versus having the work experience. For the GS9 level, that would be a master's degree. For the GS11 level, that would be a PhD degree. For the higher levels of the 12 and the 13, general, generally you will not see any substitution for education for experience. But if it's acceptable, it would be in this area under qualifications and evaluation. Again, if you go to the right, uh, right above that section, you'll see back to the top. And your next tab would be benefits and other information. In benefits and other information, you will find links to the benefits related to the U.S. government. Uh, you will see health benefits. You will see information on life insurance. You will also see information about the veteran's eligibility. It will take you to what we call the vet guide. Information about males, because after December the 31st of 1959, you have to be registered for the selected service unless you're eligible for uh, an exempt. Also, there's a section for person with disabilities, so it can explain the things that you would need in order for you to be considered. Also, if you are a displaced employee from another federal agency, you'll see information about ICAP. Again, if you go to that on that section and you go to the right hand side, you will see back to the top. And our next tab is how to apply. This is one of the critical sections on any vacancy announcement because you have to follow this section to the letter. Failure to follow this section and the time frames related to it could result in you being disqualified for the position. One of the things in uh, filling out on the how to apply section is you will be required to do what's called a questionnaire. If you go through the third line and it says view occupational question the questionnaire, if you select that, it will actually give you an opportunity to review the questions that you're going to be required to answer when you actually do the online process. One of the recommendations that we have for you is that you can take this and you can copy it, paste it into a word um, processing type system, and that way you can go and look at your answers related to it. You will see at the top that it relates to the vacancy announcement. Then, if you scroll down, you would see the title of the position, which is already there for you. It will be biographic data, your email address, employment availability. You'll have a question on citizenship. As you scroll down, if anything is required regarding languages, you will see that. The question here about the lowest grade is important, especially when there are multiple grade positions. This, as we talked about, is a 9, 11, 12, or 13. You will be required to make a selection of the lowest grade that you will accept. If you would accept only the 12 as the lowest grade, you will not be considered for the 9 and the 11. If you choose the 13, you will only be considered for the 13 and not the 9, 11, and 12. However, if you select the 9 as the lowest grade, you will be eligible for all of the four grades. You will also, next you will have miscellaneous information regarding the age, if there are any special knowledges, uh, if there's a veteran's preference claim, you scroll down, your availability date will be, request, will be required. Service computation date, if you have other federal experience. You're going to talk about job preferences, if there's anything that's there. The next section are occupational specialties. Uh, for this particular job, it's either going to be competitive or it's going to be non-competitive, and you will make that selection. If this was open up to veterans or persons with disability, you will be eligible for a non-competitive uh, uh, 
consideration. That's for person with disabilities and for the veteran. So that's what you would select. Geographic, geographic location, if this was in multiple different positions and multiple different locations, you may be requested to ask for what areas you want to be considered from. This is really important to you because if they have 20 different locations and you only select one, you will only be selected for the one area that you have added that you wanted interest in. This particular job only has one location. The job related experience you'll be requested. Any personal background information. When it comes to the occupational assessment questions, these are also important because this is how you are actually rated and ranked. We already talked about the one year specialized experience at the five, uh, at the seven level and the nine level. We also talked about it that you had the one year specialized experience at the seven and the nine. We also talked about that at those grade levels, you can actually have substitution for education for experience and that tier. This group of questions is related to your specialized experience. So you would scroll down and select which is appropriate for that particular grade that you're interested in. Because this one was limited to FDA, it also has a question whether you are a current FDA employee. One of the final sections that you will have is related to tasks where you're actually going to give a rating of yourself on how you, you would rate yourself for various tasks related to the job. It will be no education, no training, education or training, and you perform the task uh, up to being an expert. It's really important that you be honest with your rating. Failure to document that you are an expert in your resume or any other level that you rate yourself in your resume could result in disqualification. So take these ratings. A through E and answer the remaining questions in this particular section. And this is your personal rating of how you would rate yourself in these particular areas. That will be the end of your questionnaire. This will just be done when it's online, but for right now we're just doing this so you at least know what you're going to be asked when you actually do the individual rating. So as we get out of the questionnaire and we go back to the vacancy announcement, some other areas, those were all the tabs that we would actually use. But there are other areas of, of importance that you should be aware of. As you scroll up about halfway through the screen, you will see a section called Conditions of Employment. When you're looking at conditions of employment, information here will be regarding your background check and your security check and any requirements. We have information on E-Verify. Also, we're required to do direct deposit if you were selected. And if there were any special um, requirements for that particular job, such as the financial disclosure, if there was a probationary period required, our travel, transportation, or relocation expenses paid, it will say yes or no. If the position is a bargaining unit, because some of the government positions are covered by collective bargaining agreements, it will actually tell you that. If there's drug screening required, if a recruitment bonus or a reload bonus would be considered, it would be here. And also, anything about common grade, if you happen to be uh, have past federal experience. The other thing to be considered to be considered is the next section is how you will be evaluated. And this is important because it, it actually gives you the knowledge, skills, and ability, which are the competencies that the individual selecting official has selected as important for these for the job. If you look at these, make sure that these tasks and these knowledge, skills, and abilities are covered in your resume. Again, because we will be looking at those for the basic qualifications, and we also will be looking at those in your resume to determine your rating for this particular job. 
you can go back to the top, this concludes everything that you would need in a vacancy announcement and the things you should be looking for. One, what is this specialized experience? This is what we're going to be using for basic qualification. Is a substitution for education for experience. This will be your degree. If there is a substitution for education for experience or if the position has a positive education requirement, you may be required to actually submit transcripts. Also, you may be, because of your eligibility for a person with disability, or for a veteran, you will be required to submit supplemental information that supports your eligibility. DD-214s are what's required for the veteran as a minimum. Also, if you're claiming a disability, you may be required to submit the SF-15 and the documentation from the VA. Persons with disabilities would be required to submit the letter from either the voc rehab, the VA, or from your personal doctor that verifies your disability. If you will go almost to the bottom of the, of the screen, what I just went over, what is called required documents, if you can remember, there's always a section that says required documents that will refer you and it will remind you of things that are required. If you would have any questions about the package, uh, we always include the, and which is right below the required document, almost at the bottom of the screen of the vacancy announcement, you will always see the contact information where we give you our customer service help desk that can provide you any information. One key factor is when we were looking at the overview and it had the opening and closing date, Please remember that it has to be submitted by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the date of the closing date in order for me to consider. Failure to follow the form, failure to follow the open and closing period could result in you not being considered, which is something that we don't want for you. This concludes everything related to a vacancy announcement. Next, we're going to have Elaine that's going to walk you through the online process for actually applying for the job. I hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck. Elaine, we're ready for you.